guys welcome along to the march 2020 worms reloaded series hope you are all well and at the top of the series guys we've got some important announcements to make about how the scoring system is going to work in this second series so let's just jump into them and cover them so this time around instead of getting two points for a win the two points for a win will only be awarded for the overall winner of the three match series. This is a, a change we're making just to try and make the action a little bit closer so that we don't have a, uh, a clear runaway like we did in the previous uh, series. But um, hopefully, A, that will make the competition a little bit closer overall. And secondly, it will allow anybody who isn't able to play as many games who wants to get involved also to take part and maybe not be as far away from the action. Points for worm bonuses will remain at one point per worm remaining per match. Therefore, you can still rack up a uh, substantial bonus from trying to keep your worms alive during the competition. That's all the point changes, guys. Let's jump into the action again once more. We are here with Deathwish808. And a load of crap kicking us off here. Action is from the 1st of March. Without further ado, let's head into the arena. Here we go then, ladies and gentlemen. It is time to get the action underway here in Worms Reloaded. The first match of the March series. Commentary from myself, Knock, as we see Deathwish808 take on a load of crap once more. And uh, the game has decided a load of crap is going to go first in this um Indoor, quite confined area, I think you would agree in saying. Um, not the pond to get us underway here, which is unusual. But uh, let's see what a load of crap can do with his opening shot here. You have to say that um, two real worms really... I think he's going to try though, actually, here. He's going to hit the ceiling, try and knock Deathwish's worm backwards. Which he does. Now, did he get enough explosion damage with that barrel straight off as well? Let's see the final damage total there. 64. So he got a bit of extra damage. Not quite enough, though. I think he would have liked to have gets a couple of those mines involved. But straight away off the bat, we have a way through to the other side of the map. And that has opened things up quite nicely indeed in the early stages of this encounter. Deathwish now the reigning champ with the bazooka shot. Uh, smashing the geometry underneath a load of craps worm there with the bazooka. Not really much else to say about that. Uh, wasn't a direct hit, but uh, 33 damage nonetheless. you got to think that a load of crap is going to want to come out of the uh, starting blocks fighting uh, with this one. Uh, he's probably going to want revenge for what happened in the March series. Tries to do the backflip there on the right-hand side of the map. Isn't able to get up there, so he's going to... Uh, so can I just do a... Grenade shot. Probably going to look to take out this 36 worm here of Deathwish. He's got plenty of angle to play with on this shot. Let's see what he can do. It's up in the air and it's down, and that is game over for that worm. Deathwish is down a worm. Although a load of crap does have a cannonball sort of effect. I don't know why cannonball, I'm trying to think of the word. But he, he actually knocks the mine off as well and damages his own worm in that exchange. But um, Deathwish here down a worm in the early exchanges of the map. It's fortunate for a load of crap that his worm was right next to that mine. He took maximum damage from that. But uh, Deathwish now with the bazooka is going to be an up and over. Knocks the mine. What a shot. Knocks both of a load of crap's worms into mines. Let us take another look at that one on action replay. Initially, I thought Death was going for the worm nearest to him. He actually hits the scenery that knocks both of a load of crap's worms onto mines. One jars a mine onto a load of crap's worm. The other sends the worm down on top of the mine and down into the pit for some massive damage with that worm next to Deathwish there. And a load of crap is down by one worm, bringing this back to a three-on-three -three situation and uh, let's see what a load of crap can do in retaliation from for this you have to say death wishes worms in comparison are pretty well protected it's gonna be a bit of a game of chess I feel here as uh, a load of crap tries to backflip to higher ground here 
from the top of this barrel. But you have to believe there's no real clear shots actually for either player. Is there a pixel blocking him there? He may be. He gets up. It's fine. There is a pixel there. I just thought, wonder if it would block him. It doesn't. Uh, halfway through the turn. But yeah, you've got to imagine that there's not a lot of open shots available here. So we may see quite a few turns um, that are going to just be about setting up for the future. There's a load of crap. Tries to loft a grenade down to that little worm of death wishes on the left hand side, but isn't able to get the positioning, unfortunately. And we are, as you were, going into a Death Wishes turn here. I think he may be able to get the kill here, though, on a load of Craps Worm. If he can get to the high ground and shoots at that Worm, I think there might be enough impact or splatter damage to cause a death to that Worm. And I think that's what Death Wish is going to do. He does indeed. He takes a bit of damage himself, but he takes the advantage three Worms to two in this opening match. A load of crap now is going to have his worm here on the right hand side to play with next. Um, but realistically, what can he do? He isn't able to really attack that worm in the top right of Death Wishes. It's protected by those golf balls as the worm almost taunts. I think he's just going to throw a grenade up here in the hope that he can take away some of that shelter and start to open up that area. Um, he really doesn't have any other open shot available to him. Uh, unfortunately, there's a little bounce off the wall which kicks the grenade out to the left and um, doesn't quite give him the damage he was perhaps looking for in that shot. But um, it was a good idea indeed as Deathwish now bringing his worm further back. Is he going to try and open up the area here? Or is he going to go on the attack? Switches out to the grenade, adds five seconds to the timer. Let's see what he is going to do here. He adjusted the angle just at the last minute. And look at that. That was three damage on the worm. That was a really good shot. If he'd have had a little less time on that timer, he would have been able to take out some of uh, a load of crap's damage there. Unfortunately, he didn't. But that's a good marker for that worm's next shot. Back to the middle of the map here then with a load of crap. He now has a... He so has to watch that pixel, but he now has a clear shot here at Death Wish's Worm. He's not going to be able to take it out, though, fully in this turn. His only saving grace could be that it's the uh, Death Wish's Worm on the far left to go next. Shoots the grenade as opposed to a rocket here. Isn't able to rocket jump back up to the top. Now, this is interesting. If this Worm of Death Wish in the middle plays next, this could actually cause a lot of damage to a load of crap if he can somehow bring in that barrel. It is not, though, unfortunately, for Death Wish 808. So, assuming Death Wish doesn't attack a load of crap's Worm and get rid of it here, um, I think we could be seeing uh, this down to a two-on-two -two situation real soon. The grenade gets stuck in the ceiling, kind of tries to roll around that little alcove. Isn't enough power on it in the end from... Uh, there's enough force from the gravity on it in the end, and um, no damage is incurred. Of course, a load of craps next worm to play is this one on the right. So Deathwish Center Worm, ignore what I said before, it is going to get another turn here. So before a load of craps center worm. So it'd be interesting to see what our Deathwish takes on the next shot. But back on the right hand side of the map here, I think a load of crap is just going to be chipping a bit more at this um, air up here. I think he's going to. I wondered if he was going to swap out to a bazooka there. The wind is with him, and it would kill the shot back. But uh, it looks like he's going to stick with the grenade for now. He set the timer to two seconds. Interesting. No, he's gone to the bazooka like I thought he would. Um, for, wasn't quite enough angle, but there is now a clear path through to that worm of death wish on the high right. So, like I said, this shot it could potentially be very interesting. I think. Don't quote me on this, but I think if you can get a grenade next to that barrel, that's going to cause monumental damage. It was only 45 in the end, and he went for the bazooka. The bazooka radius, the, the blast radius of that bazooka shot did explode the barrel as well. I just wondered if he could get a grenade next to that barrel and cause an uh, explosion next to the barrel where it would throw the fire up to the worm. Using the bazooka like that, the worm was already thrown up into the air. Um away from the barrel almost so that's why i avoided the fire damage i, I, I need a, an expert opinion on that one anyway a load of crap here should be able to bring this down to the two on two here with the uh, he's got the grenade out one second 
And it wasn't close enough. I was just about to say, anyway, remotely close will seal the deal. It wasn't close enough. Deathwish Worm survives with seven health. Although, uh, in the cent central conflict here, assuming that worm can survive, um, he will get another turn at that one on Deathwish. Deathwish with pretty much the same shot as he did last time, unfortunately. He's still on the five second timer. I think the timer needed to be reduced to about three seconds there just to uh, have it floating parallel with that worm to cause damage. What he has done there, he has created a water pit down there just to the left of that lower right worm of a load of crap. So that is definitely going to come into play real soon, I would assume. Can a load of crap now make a capitalization on this area that he opened up in the previous shot? Let us see. Two seconds on the grenade. I think he's going to just go straight up and hope for a bounce off the golf ball, which is going to send it straight directly directly onto Deathwish 808's worm here. Let's see what he does. The grenade is up in the air. It comes back down, though, in between the barrels. Is the fire going to rain down? It is for a load of crap, and a load of crap has committed suicide. And we are three on one here with a load of crap. Down to one, looking very good for our reigning champion to take the first uh, match of this mini series here. Let's see. The grenade is up. Sorry, the rocket is up. Um, takes out geometry. You have to say, out of two of the, uh, probably all of Deathwish's worms, has a clear shot on this worm of a load of crap. So it's only going to be a matter of time, you have to believe, before Deathwish ties this up. It just d depends on how much damage limitation a load of crap can do here can he can he take out this worm second time of asking he's only got seven health left he's altering the angle to try and bank it more off that ceiling let's see doesn't need much power on this at all and just he does throw the worm into the water but health wise he did just manage enough i think he got nine damage there on the seven health worm and we are down to two on one, but I can't imagine this is going to last much longer with a load of crap only on 10 health. Uh, his only saving grace is that this worm of Death Wishes at the minute hasn't had a shot on this worm, and he takes damage to himself but opens up that area, almost inviting a load of crap in. Is it possible for a load of crap here to get a uh, bazooka shot in here? all depends on the wind of course but could he get a bazooka shot on this 88 worm and um get him to come down far enough we're not going to know he's going to attack the worm on the other side and try and bring this mine into play three seconds on the grenade timer here let's see what pans out in this shot night beautifully lofted it's at the side lovely shot two direct impact shots it's going to leave that worm with 10 health though unfortunately um but that worm is next to play he's been his position on the, the playing area has been adjusted. Um, but you have to say, if he can get the same shot that this one pulled off last time, it was beautifully arced over across, and it would see the end of a load of crap's worm. Let's see what Deathwish is doing. I'm sure he's frantically fiddling with that abacus, trying to get the correct um, angles and power measurements needed for this shot. Let's see. It's almost halfway through the turn here. Eight seconds left on the match timer. It's up in the air. It's a grenade in the end. It bounces beautifully. Just falls down too much at the end. That was really unfortunate for Defa. She got some really good bounces on that. Um, a beautifully placed grenade shot indeed. But um, let's see what a load of crap can do here. He could potentially finish off this worm on the left to bring it down to a one-on-one -on -one situation. I think that's going to be the best he can really hope for here. You have to say Deathwish is looking very favorable to take this first match. And a carbon copy shot does indeed see the end of that left hand worm. So it's down to a one on one. And um, you have to think. This next shot, though, is going to tie it all up now that Deathwish opened it up in his previous shot. The wind is slightly against him, but it's not going to affect him too much with only a one bar on the wind meter. The grenade shot is good. It's just above. It's 31 damage on a 10 health worm. That is the game. Congratulations to Deathwish for taking the first game of the series. 
Here we go then, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for match number two between Deathwish808 and a load of crap. Deathwish currently leads one game to zero over a load of crap. And we are here in the beautiful pond situation. And you just know that the action is going to come thick and fast. Um, everybody is clumped together as we see it already off the bat. Such carnage from the opening shot. Deathwish with a bazooka shot onto a load of crab, knocking him initially into the water. And then um, other explosions going on around him, then sending one of his own worms into the drink. Already we are down to three on three. What a crazy opening start here. And uh, if I was a load of crap here, I'd be very tempted by those two mines around Deathwish's worm um, on the left-hand side there. The only thing he has to be wary of, though, is any sort of impact, excess impact or explosion damage here could potentially knock one or two of his worms into the drink. So um, it might be wise to drop his worm down to the left if he's going to go for this play, which it looks like he is. He's got his grenade out. He's adjusting angles and times. We're down to 15 on the shot clock. Still can't quite decide what he wants to do. Ten left. The grenade is up and down. Here we go then. And he's... Wow, okay, that's interesting. He brought his own worm over there to take the impact damage. He manages to survive, though, while Deathwish's worm is sent flying into the drink. And a load of crap now takes this match three to two. We've got a barrel and a worm next to that barrel. This is going to be big damage here from uh, <laughs> Deathwish. He actually... <laughs> man, there's so much going on here. A load of crap's worm sent into the drink. The fire then damaging Deathwish's worm. And uh, just like that, we are down to two on two within minutes of this match starting. Absolutely crazy scenes here, but I think the action is going to slow down a bit here now. We've got rid of all our mines and explosive barrels, so uh, okay, okay. the game of chess is really going to begin. Deathwish taking the slight advantage here in terms of health, 150 plays, 106, but um, you have to say this is anybody's game, and Deathwish's lower right worm here is definitely very vulnerable, but a load of crap is slightly short on that grenade shot. He's very vulnerable with the amount of fire around him. I think, though, by the time a load of crap gets to have another turn, that fire's going to go out. He's got to be very careful, though, at Deathwish, of that fire that is right above that worm's head. Anyway, back to the other side of the map. A good um, bazooka shot across the map. There we go. That's the fire I was talking about. It dropped. Uh, Deathwish got quite lucky there with only six damage, but um, yeah, a, the win was with him, and that was a beautiful bazooka shot from Deathwish 808, um, dropping both of a load of crap's worms together. That's always a disadvantage when your worms are together because it kind of makes the other, it gives the other person an opportunity to target both at the same time, which can cause double damage. Um, a load of crap here, surely going to target Deathwish's 44 worm. The bazooka shot is out of the question. It's going to be a grenade toss across the map. It's up high. And actually, he gets it and attacks the high worm. That was in, an interesting shot from a load of crap. Very good indeed. Uh, I don't know if that's what he was going for or if it just caught the brolly and bounced awkwardly. But, um, yeah, good shot there from a load of crap, um, taking out some damage from the protected worm. Deathwish there with the cross map bazooka, sending that worm to its end. We are two on one in favor of Deathwish 808 here. And um, Deathwish certainly has the advantage here. He has the high ground. A load of crap can, though, with a, a, a nicely placed grenade shot. He's got to go with the grenade and the wind is against him. He's got to watch those pixels, though. That's going to uh, affect his angle slightly. But grenade shot here could bring it down to the one-on-one -on -one. if he can get it close enough to that 44 worm on bottom right there it's gone across it's three seconds on the timer will it come down fortunately it was bouncing around and in the air just a little bit too much if it had sat down on the ground that would have been a good shot um 15 damage though from a load of crap on that shot Deathwish here having to go for a grenade toss it's gonna bounce though it looked, it looked very low as it was going across, and it catches the lip, and it's back into the water. And a load of crap survives once more. Can he finish what he started now in the previous turn? Uh, he does have win with him, but I think 
I'd be more inclined to stay with a grenade. Let's see what he does here. We are still on the grenade. No, he is switching it out to a bazooka. So, can he get a good enough angle on here? Deathwish shaking his head. He thinks not. Um, but that is enough. There wasn't enough on the initial impact, but there's enough for Deathwish to slide down the land and into the drink. He wasn't able to get those suction cups out in time this time around. And uh, it's down to a one-on-one -on -one again for the second time in this match. Deathwish once again catching that scenery and uh, sending his grenade straight into the drink. What can a load of crap do here? Is the wind going to be with him? Let's looking at the way the leaves are falling. I would say it's against him. It is indeed. Um, so he's going to try and go for higher ground here. Does that mean he's going to? I think that might mean he's going to stick with a bazooka. High ground will give him a higher angle as the wind will push the shot down. So let's see. It's it, there's too much resistance there, unfortunately, for a load of crap. And um, the rocket is sent into the top of the brolly. Deathwish now can he capitalise from his mistakes? You have to say though, he's got very limited angles here for our, for his worm, um, given that that um, bit of scenery at the top there is um, so close to his worm is so close to it. But um, let's see what goes on here. He's Thinking about what he can do with the shots. Still got uh, almost half his time left on the shot clock here. Loads of time on, on just under 11 minutes on the actual game timer. And that's what I mean. He's he's very Deathwish is very restricted here on angles. His worm is too close to that ceiling. So if a load of crap can knock that worm down, that's going to definitely put him in a good stead to launch a full-on assault. I just also noticed a load of crap has taken the lead in terms of health, only by a mar small margin of six, though. Uh, the wind is three against him, and I don't think he's going to attempt what he did last time, so the grenade does come out. This angle's probably good. He just needs to get the right power and time. That was a good curve round and bounce up there to take out the geometry underneath Deathwish 808, reducing his worm down to 38. And the pendulum is swinging towards a load of crap, you have to say, at this current moment in time. Deathwish, though, now has free angles to uh, launch an assault here on a load of crap. I think a load of crap's worm is pretty safe here, though. I don't think there's going to be any chance of him um, and his worm ending up in the drink. He's far enough away on that left-hand side. So Deathwish really needs to think very carefully of what he's going to do. An almost direct shot. What a shot from Deathwish. For a first-time shot, that was very impressive indeed. And uh, the pendulum swings back to Deathwish 808 in terms of health. But it is a load of crap to go next. And he has options. So um, a direct or near-direct hit will end this worm's life. If, however, he comes up short on a shot, he's going to have to use the grenade here, so it's very interesting. But he could take out the geometry just in front of Deathwish, which would, should lower that worm into the watery grave. But I think he's going to try and go behind him. It's a good shot, but ultimately it wasn't enough. It bounced up too high for a load of crap. And you have to say now, Deathwish is going to take this one. You can't see Deathwish missing from here. He's already got everything lined up perfectly. He can't use the bazooka, so he's going to have to switch out to the grenade. And that's really unfortunate for a load of crap. Let's see what happens. No! The grenade bounces uh, short. So it's back in a load of crap's favour here. Can a load of crap capitalise? Let's look to see what the wind is doing. The wind looks to be going towards Deathwish 808. It is indeed. So he has a bazooka shot or a grenade shot on here. Let's see what he can do. Currently with the grenade switching out to the bazooka there. Come on, a load of crap. We're all rooting for you. Bring it back to a one-on-one, -on -one, to a sudden death decider. Can he do it? Let's have a look. He can indeed a direct shot. That is the end of the match. He ties up the, the, the games tonight one-on-one. -on -one, and we're going to go into the final match to see who is going to come out on top tonight. Very interesting, though, as we head into that final match. Ladies and gentlemen, strap yourselves in. We are in for the decider here. One match to one between Deathwish 808 and a load of crap as we head into the finale. And we are on a land structure here. This one could be a bit of a long and drawn out map. So uh, go grab some snacks, grab a drink, make yourself company as we uh, the action gets underway here with a load of crap's worm on the left hand side. And you have to say he is not in a position at the minute to be doing any sort of damage to anyone and it's going to be a bit of a uh, landscaping 
mission for that worm to be able to get him involved here in the early stages of this match. Over to Deathwish here in the center of the map here. I was so surprised he didn't take that last map, map that last um, match. Uh, he just came up too, a little bit too short on that grenade toss there. But um, all in all, that makes a for an exciting finale here as he switches out to the bazooka. What is he going to do? I would say he's going to... Yeah. Oh, he rainbows over the top. I think he was going there to hit the worm or the barrel to send that worm flying away over to the right-hand side of the map. It wasn't to be. Death Witch with the rainbow shot straight into the water. And a load of crap gets away with it, so to speak. But uh, he has another worm, which is completely and utterly isolated and trapped in and cannot do anything with it. You have to say, in all the matches we have played so far, a load of crap seems to be the really unlucky one when it comes to worm placement. Nine times out of ten, it is his worms which are isolated and in these sorts of situations... Um, it's really unfortunate for the player who ends up with that because they they just they're effectively losing a turn every time around. So anyway, back to the action with Deathwish here on the right hand side of the map. Is he going to try and do the same thing again here with this second worm? We have a uh, a grenade out with. He's trying to decide what to go for. I think he's he's teasing here. One second timer on the grenade. It's up and it shoots the worm into the path of the barrel and down to the bottom and you have to say that's a third worm for a load of crap which is now in some form of isolation um and to be fair his his worm his his 100 health worm as well isn't particularly in a great position so this is going to be very tricky for a load of crap indeed but if he can come back from this um these initial positionings and do anything in this map, um, I think he should be very, very proud indeed. It's very difficult to be able to um, get into the map when your worms are positioned like this. Halfway through the shot clock, the grenade, the rocket, sorry, is up in the air and it hits the roll of turf right above Deathwish's 100 worm there and knocks the grenade down to safety, pretty much putting it out of play as we go to Deathwish's high worm here at the top of the map has lots of options available to him um i think we i think i would have probably gone for a grenade however what he's done there is very clever we've got rid of one of the mines the other is teetering down into that alcove of a load of crap and actually explodes there um wasn't a direct hit which is probably the only saving grace there for a load of crap but um i did think he would maybe just toss a grenade down and try and hit a load of craps 100 worm but uh, good shot clever clever use of um the bazooka and the mines there definitely um and the saving grace now for a load of crap has to be that this worm that he's playing with now does have the ability to come out of this little isolation area down here and um once that fire goes out should be able to get involved a little bit more in this game I think you can only really attack the worm on the right here as he's going with a three second timer it's up in the air it's gonna come, it's not going to come down far enough though unfortunately a four second timer would have been the right call there but um in these sorts of situations when you're just testing the waters there's a lot of a lot of the time you just cannot um unless you're really lucky you cannot uh, hit anything off the first time around. Deathwish here going for a back throw, trying to get this worm to high ground. Got to be very careful. He doesn't slide down there and into the drink, but he does manage to uh, get on top of this bottle here and get a little bit more higher ground. What's he going to do with this worm, though? Um, just fires the rocket off into the distance on the left-hand side of the map. Um, I think he could have, he could have attempted a shot. Uh, over towards the right the only danger of course would have been the, the potential to hit the uh, worm his own worm at the top there surrounded by those mines and barrels uh, a load of crap here back with this worm on the lower right here and that fire very close to raining down i think he's gonna that worm is gonna have some fire on his head in a minute it's gonna drop down and curl back around and um it's not going to be great for a load of crap. The fire could also hinder him depending on how it burns out the geometry. So just keep an eye on what it's doing with the scenery there. Deathwish with a little grenade toss there just to cause a little bit of damage there on a load of crap's worm. There's the fire dropping down. 
Oh, the crap taking a big fire damage there. He's not out of the woods yet, though, because more fire could drop down and could curl around that area and hit him for a second time. So still keep an eye on that fire until it goes out. Um, it's still very much in play here. Oh, the crap now with his second isolated worm here. But that should uh, free him up. It just depends whether or not Deathwish can. There goes the fire. It's dropped. I think he's going to be safe, though, because the, the fire is going to go out on this turn. So I don't think... We'll, we'll get a better look in a minute. I don't think it's hindered him too much either as Deathwish with a grenade toss up. And look at that. He was so lucky. There was one little tiny bit of fire because of the wind. Blew it across to Deathwish. I really thought that was going to land on that worm's head and send him into the water. He was lucky, though, and he manages to get out unscathed. I'll lay the crap now with his third isolated worm. Isolation worm number three here. It's almost like all his worms have been diagnosed with coronavirus and they're in quarantine. They're that far away from the map and they just cannot do anything. It's, um, like I say, it's really unfortunate when your worms end up like that. Great shot. A good effort there from a load of crap. Just slightly, um, slightly altering the angle there i don't think he had scope to alter the angle but just, just a slight different angle there would have been a perfect shot and would have sent death wishes worm into the drink surprisingly enough though we are still four on four here we haven't lost a single worm in this confrontation as of yet so um it's very close between the players of course a load of craps has three worms in isolation which aren't attackable this is really his only free worm here but what can he do here? I think he's going to just loft a loft a shot up in the air. Got to be careful of that mine, though. But I, I think attacking this worm on the brolly is the right thing to do. I think he's gone really high. That's going to go way past. Yep. And it's actually rolled nearer to his own worm. I think there's just far too much power on there. But I can understand what he was doing. I think he was trying to hit the worm on the left-hand side of the worm. If he'd have gone central in between the worm and the mine... That would have sent the mine cascading down towards one of his worms, which would have been absolutely catastrophic. I think Deathwish thinks he's got an angle here to drop a grenade down. He does indeed. Look at that. He's opened up the area nicely between the two of them. And that worm is in the drink. And we have lost our first worm. It is a load of crap with the worm down. Deathwish takes the advantage. Four to three in this final match here. I think we might just start to see a bit more action building up here as um, these worms are coming out of these areas. What can a load of crap do here? He's got, surely got to attack the worm here with a bazooka, but the question is, what is going to happen with that mine? Is the worm going to take the damage from the mine, or is the mine going to drop down and inflict damage on a load of crap? Only time will tell. Halfway through the shot, the shot is up in the air. He sets the mine off. That's probably the best outcome. He didn't take... Any the worm didn't take any damage from the mine, but the mine stayed in place as the worm skipped over the top of the mine, activating its trigger, and um, both of those worms managed to survive without taking damage. So, like I said, action is starting to ramp up now as these worms are getting access to each other. It's going to be a direct shot here for 45. It wasn't direct, I should say 37. Before we'd see a direct shot there, we don't. It's only 37, but... That has put that worm of a load of craps into one-shot territory now. So um, you have to say two of his worms here aren't looking very good at all because one of them is still in the isolation whose turn it is now. He's adjusting the angle slightly. He's, I assume he's going to try and do this shot again. He's uh, Actually, he's changed his mind. He's gone to a grenade with five seconds, so I can only assume he's going to try and attack the high worm here. No, he goes for the low worm. Bounces lovely position next to him. And that is maximum damage, bringing that worm down to 11. Um, oh, 10, sorry. Because he got one from fall damage for some reason. I wouldn't have thought he fell. I didn't think he'd, he fell high enough or far enough to actually incur any damage here. But um, Deathwish lost the grenade up. It's down into the pit. And that's just tunneling away, my friend. That's not going to do you any good whatsoever. So a load of crap has a big opportunity here to bring this back down to a three on three by attacking that worm of death which is in the his middle worm there all you got to do a load of crap is drop a grenade in there next to death wish and its curtains 
Anywhere remotely close will finish the job. He's delaying the inevitable as well with a 10 second timer. That's definitely going to be close enough. He might take some damage himself here though. Nope, he's far enough away. And we are back to three on three in this match. Um, looking at positioning, so you have to say, Deathwish has the big advantage with that worm on the far right hand side of the map. You call it an advantage, although he will lose a turn. Um... I have seen players in this position before just kill off their worms just so that they can have more useful turns, so to speak. But um, we'll see what Deathwish decides to do the next time that worm's turn comes around because he's not going to be able to chip away at geometry there without taking damage himself. So it might just be worth him dropping him in the pond and um, focusing on his other two worms, getting one of those an extra turn every three. Load of crap now bringing this one out. And this might be a carnage shot if he can uh, get the angles and power right here. There is a lot of explosive goodies sat around this Worm of Deathwish 808. Let's see what he is going to do. Into a mine. The mine is going to cascade everything off. And uh, the barrel's gone off. All the mines have gone off. Was it enough damage? It wasn't. It was only 57. Um... You always have to be wary when shot explosions go off near those explosive items because um, Shit up there. you have to be wary because it can cause extra damage. I think Deathwish is going to try and chip away. Okay, he was trying to use the wind there, I think, to attack the 92 wind. So maybe that worm's not so redundant after all, but it's going to, its shots are going to be very dependent on the wind. But as I was saying, you have to be very careful when you have grenades or explosive damage near explosive items because it causes that extra damage and can easily finish off um, a worm. As a load of crap now with a second grenade into the pit, that's going to finish Deathwish's other worm off. And we are now down to a two on three in favour of a load of crap the tide is certainly turning here but you have to say if this goes all the way then Deathwish definitely has the advantage here with the higher ground what can a load of crap do about that uh, high left worm of a Deathwish 808 we'll have to wait and see it's always awkward when there is a worm in a position such as that Surely going to be a grenade shot looking at the wind. Three against a load of crap here. Going to try and attack a Deathwish's 100 worm. Perfect shot into the drink. Three on one for a load of crap. But it comes down now to what can he do about this worm of Deathwishes. Fantastic effort here from a load of crap. Really bringing it to Deathwish in this initial series. Deathwish just almost wasting turns almost. You have to say, though, if a load of crap can't... I don't see a way for a load of crap to get this worm here without some immense landscaping. So we, we this could be a long and drawn-out process here. We'll have to wait and see how this um, turns out here. Perfectly perch grenade there on that. That's going to definitely open up that and give him a more of an angle, a more remove room, more room, more room to maneuver. I was trying to say, um, and to try and get some better shots from that worm. Deathwish here takes out the bottle. Okay, interestingly, I thought he might. I didn't think he could do that without taking damage. He does though, so that was an interesting shot, definitely. But does that now open up the area for a load of crap? Considering this worm as well was has been in isolation for pretty much the entirety of the match, um, and to still be alive at this time is phenomenal achievement. Three worms in isolation, and only he's only lost one of those worms, and has been able to make enough damage on Deathwish to take him down. What a shot! Oh my goodness, we've got to take another look at that from a load of crap where the match-winning shot there takes the match. I have never seen anything like that before. Threading the eye of a needle. That is shot of the match. That's probably shot of the entire matches that we've seen so far in the February series and this one combined. So let's take another look at that shot. 
Honestly and truthfully, this is an absolute thing of beauty. We were just saying how this worm had been isolated. Look at how much room there is to get a shot through there. Really restricting down the angles. The rocket is up, like threads the eye of the needle. Not just once, but twice. Look at it here. It goes through this tiny gap here, just hitting the geometry above Deathwish's worm, enough to send him sliding down the cliff and into the pit. And that has to be one of the most amazing shots I have ever seen in a game of worms. What an absolutely fantastic way for a load of crap to start the March 2020 series here. Taking two of the matches tonight to take the overall match win with a massive three worm bonus in that final match, putting him on six points. Our reigning champion, Deathwish 808, all the way down at the bottom for the first time ever on a single point. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. We'll be back real soon with even more Worms action. But until then, thank you and goodbye.